What's up, YouTubers? This is Dirk, coming at you with a 2002 Honda Accord EX clutch job. So, my attempt today is going to be to replace the clutch, pressure plate, flywheel, rear main seal, master cylinder, and slave cylinder in the car. Uh, I will say, uh, I believe in giving credit where it's due, I purchased a $20 three hour video from Eric, the car guy. I need to give him major props. Chris Fix is another huge um, YouTuber that I follow. This is a $2,300 job if I take it to the Honda dealership. Um, all in, I didn't. Have, I never had a low profile floor jack. That was that was a hundred bucks a Harbor Freight. You know, even with that, I spent about four hundred dollars in parts and tools for this job. When you're putting in the manual transmission fluid, I'd be using this to push it up into the uh, transmission. It's my grease that I'll be using. Blue thread locker. This stuff is very common. So wherever you get it, this is a slave cylinder. Of course, this is the rear main seal. And then it came with three of these gaskets. These gaskets are almost like cloth. Okay, very flexible. So I'm trying to be careful with them. Got the uh, master cylinder flywheel. These are very heavy. Just be careful. And I will be cleaning these with brake cleaner. You're not supposed to take dirty hands and be touching this stuff. So this is my clutch. I'm still keeping it in the plastic wrap just to protect it. But you can see I poked through to, to test the spline alignment tool. Uh, this will come with the throw out bearing. Uh, this is very critical. I've already put this through the clutch and into the flywheel which already comes with a little pilot bearing inside you can see that bearing that's inside the flywheel and it's very important that that goes through honda manual transmission fluid brake parts cleaner and uh, some dot three brake fluid for those that don't know brake fluid is the same thing as clutch fluid Start by removing the battery negative first and the positive but i'm going to start by removing this coolant overflow tank just setting it aside All right. positive. and i'm going to be cleaning these when i put it back um, i have a lot of oil when i remove the bell housing for the transmission that's when i'll clean it all up these little J-hooks, as you can see, I'm just using a go-through socket. Uh, they should not be on there so tight that you actually need the socket to take it off. That would be ridiculous. So. And so that's disgusting. We'll be cleaning that. There is this little tab and um, that goes into a hole inside the car. All right, so this little 12 millimeter bolt, I'm just gonna remove uh, that uh, starter electrical connection and put that bolt right back on so we don't lose it. And then this little spade connector here. Just be very, very careful. This looks like it's been seen better days, but okay very careful not to uh, bend that piece of the starter. Here. This is the original starter, so it's just been a long, long time. Just had a break. There we go. Okay, broke that free. This is a short one. I'll keep with the starter. All right. So I'll put that back in the hole for the starter. But for right now, I'm just gonna set it right there while I get the uh, 17 millimeter one off. 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the starter that I'm gonna need to get um, a little bit better access to once I remove all these cables. So I'm just gonna kind of keep rolling through. You might choose to do this in a different order, but right now I'm just gonna remove the uh, air filter. Clip. Very gently pulling that out. There we go. Got that little wire harness stuck in there as well. 
You just want to loosen it enough to be able to remove it. Okay. Be very careful when you're taking this out. There's two 10 millimeter bolts holding the uh, grounding wires and this kind of harness to the bell housing. I'm going to remove those and get those out of the way. There's that top one. And there's the bottom one, just two 10 millimeters, FYI. Just right there is that 17 millimeter for the starter that I'm gonna get next. Got the starter out. This is the uh, 17 millimeter bell housing bolt. Here is the much easier one. Just gonna keep those together. So once I remove these uh, shift linkages, uh, I'm gonna try to salvage the cotter pins, but I don't really care since I have another one. Okay. All I did was just pop that shift linkage up, just like that, just lifted it up. Both these washers came off. Uh, there are two of them. Let's see how they're, how they're defined. There's two of them. I'm gonna just keep them in this order. This was the bottom, right? And that was the top. I'm gonna do the other side now. Right, take my pliers. All right. Careful when you separate. I could see that. Yeah, that's a better example. You got that plastic or it's not paper, but it's real flimsy plastic washer on the bottom, metal one on the top. So now remove that linkage and remove the other one because when you drop the bell housing, then I could be able to be in there. But okay. There's an electrical connection down here. You just have to remove. It's all the way back there that's connected to the bell housing the rest of this is not going to be involved okay i got some 10 millimeter bolts um right on the ends of my fingers and this is of course the uh out of out of camera here just a little bit slave cylinder this this uh metal supply line is a slave cylinder and that is what this bracket is right here so we're going to, need to remove that and this uh is a cabling harness here. I'm gonna, my end goal is to remove, you can't really see it, but there's a bunch of brackets right here that runs underneath the distributor, kind of a cable harness. Just slides out, but uh, there's a bolt there, so I'm gonna get rid of those two tins. for a 10 millimeter bolt. My gosh. Did I get it? Yep, I got it. That fits on there nice and snug so I'm not worried about it stripping. And then this uh, 12 millimeter goes over. And then of course, just have to uh, pinch the two ends here. I know my hand's in the way. There we go. And then continue moving. Get the radiator hose out of the way. I think that was a 15 millimeter on the bottom. Now that it's free. Yeah, just loosen this. Be mindful that now everything you touch has brake fluid on it, so I'll be cleaning my gloves off here in a second. I'm gonna cap that, slide it out of the way, up and under. All right, I'm gonna get these two 12, mil 12 millimeter bolts from the slave cylinder. <clears throat> Sorry. Take this up and out of that little boot, clutch fork, without spilling it everywhere. Bad man, all right. Just noting that this fitting here does not come on the new one. So I'm gonna make sure I take that off, but everything else is identical. So be very careful when you're chucking parts that you don't inadvertently lose something like that. This cable harness here, as you can see, just slides up and over these tabs right there. Right there, my finger's not on it, but showing you where it is. That's the silver tip of my, um, 12 millimeter bolt. This is the shift linkage. There we go. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay, now we're gonna remove uh, two of the bell housing bolts. One of them is just behind this. You, know, you can kind of see the bottom of it right there. Now you can see why we had to remove that cable harness to be able to have access to it. Okay, broke that. I'm just breaking it free. Now this one back here. I really should have used my drill. But as you can see, these are pretty long. So I'm going to go put this and just mark it. Bell housing right by the starter. When this is out, we'll go to the next one. All right, I am now, just for reference here, orientation, front of the car, going under it. I'm going to remove this uh, lower splash shield. And as you can see, I am missing a ton of fasteners. Nothing, nothing, nothing. That's not even, I think, what's intended to be there. Nothing. One. So I have one fastener under here. So uh, that's, that's a problem. And I'm going to need to remove several of these 10 millimeter bolts. After the splash shield, I'm going to get this, remove this engine mount. Uh, as you can see, we're starting to get a lot more space with that lower splash shield removed little bracket here that goes underneath and this uh, I think this is like a heater hose something whatever this this hose is right here cups into there this is the clip that this bracket was in that I could feel it wasn't wasn't able to come out and then the uh, 10 millimeter threaded hole right there went into that. So it's essentially sitting like this, right? With that harness right there, clipping into it, the hose right there, clipping into it, and then this sitting there. Now, what that gained me, there, there's on the end of my finger there, and then the end of my finger there, two more uh, 12 millimeter bolts, I believe, for uh, to remove the rest of the uh, clutch hydraulics from the bell housing. Okay, I'm just gonna take this uh, 12 millimeter down there. <sighs> Whew. That, my friends, is an awfully long bolt. Okay, so that one I just removed is right there. The other one is right there. It's removed, uh, or it's loosened, but yeah, these are these are awfully tight. Uh, so a total of three 12 millimeter bolts for the clutch hydraulics there. Okay. Um, now that I finally got that clutch hydraulics fixed, I'm going to take this uh, 17 millimeter bolt out. That's on the uh, front engine belt. So there's a cotter pin on this castle nut. Okay, at this point, we need to pry the ball joint away from the lower control arm. And normally that means hitting this lower control arm with a hammer right here. Um, the theory behind that being that it transfers the energy where you want to hit it right here. I put some pressure on it and I was hitting it while there was pressure up finally kind of budged. So I don't think I have a strong enough hammer, but as you can see now, it's it's out. Okay. So now what I need to do is remove that um, through bolt. Sorry, that through bolt of the lower wishbone in order to gain access to those two bolts right there for the uh, strut rod or the radius rod right there. the punch just put this through on the other side and hammer it till it comes out I 
this point, I need to um, pull the axle out of the uh, hub. So the reason when you take that axle nut off, the reason that you want to be able to push is because when you take the uh, castle nut off the ball joint there, um, you have to pull this wheel hub off and the axle needs to go out because when you go to take the axle out, if it's still connected into the wheel hub, then it's not going to go anywhere. Trying to demonstrate that I found a 27 millimeter socket that fits over the axle nut without damaging the part that you need. So with that on, like so, okay, then I can put that on there. And that's what I was hammering, or in this case, just pushing to get that axle all the way out of the way as much as I can. Now I'm going to get underneath the car and uh, pry the axle free now that it's free. two 19 millimeter bolts on this uh, radius rod and this is what finally worked a real breaker bar with a real socket and then this is the uh, half of my handle on my floor jack this is the only half inch driver that I have but this is a torque wrench um, you really should not use a torque wrench for um, breaker bars because the spring inside that's meant to do the actual torque spec uh, part that'll malfunction if you use this as a breaker bar you can screw it up um, I knew that however this is what happens when you try to use a 3 8 inch breaker bar broke it snapped it right off I broke two of my half inch to 3 8 inch um, little socket converters that one was not a big deal <laughs> this one it was personal man holy crap and that's a uh, 17 millimeter on the castle nut Driver's side, obviously, we uh, need to remove the ball joint down here on the bottom, but we're going to leave the wish the through bolt through the wishbone. We don't need to remove this axle all the way. We just have to pull it out, so there's no reason to be able to get that wishbone out of the way. Two radius rod bolts right here and right there on the eraser. Axle is free. Okay, got it. Okay, just gonna bungee the axle to the shocks up here so that. much as possible.
I think I'm gonna just get this um, axle out and then we have uh, an intermediate shaft. What I'm gonna do is pry uh, the axle off of uh, this piece here. And then this is the intermediate shaft that runs all the way into the transmission bell housing. You've got to one, two bolts up there and a third one back there. Immediate shaft should come right on out. Good sound. All right, got this down. Have a little note. Um, on the passenger side, you'll have no issues, but on the driver's side, attached. Right there is a clip, a clip, block this light here for this, uh, this coolant line. It's either coolant or power steering, I can't tell, but it attaches right here. And uh, at least it has a, uh, a flexible hose here. So when it dropped, it didn't bend the pipe, it just moved that flexible hose. But if you're by yourself and you don't account for um, the clip, there's a clip right here. And then what I just showed you attaches right there. Be very careful. At this point, I'm gonna take off a little cover here, a couple bolts right here. And then I'm gonna start working on a transmission mount. Take this through bolt out, that bolt out, that bolt down there at the bottom. I took the drain pan right, uh, right there. It's a 3 8 inch ratchet. Just took that out and drained everything That is one that you want to undo and then leave there. When you undo that one, okay, then when you take the transmission apart, uh, the end of that will just be sitting there. That'll be the first one that you can push in and start threading. But the rest of this is, is ready to go. And uh, I'm a little nervous, to be honest. It's about 2 a.m. I'm tired. And, uh, you know, if you're not nervous pulling a transmission on top of yourself, then... I want to wake up a little bit. So as you can see, the transmission was out and I could not figure out why it wasn't going. And there's a stupid bolt attached to that, which leads Holy mother loving transmission. That is not fun by yourself, but look how nasty that is. I have my mask on, by the way, and uh, I'm going to spray this down with a water bottle just to keep any airborne particles down, and then I'll come back with brake cleaners. The whole reason for doing this, I'm going to spray this down with uh, water as well, take off the pressure plate, and check the clutch. 3 8 12-point socket. And go around in a circle. And there is the pressure plate. And the clutch. So I am getting down pretty close to the rivets, which is why it was starting to slip. Uh, you will need a 17 millimeter 12 point for these flywheel bolts. I have sprayed all this with water. Um, it's really nasty to breathe this stuff in. And uh, just as a reminder, I took one of the pressure plate uh, bolts and one of the bell housing bolts 
and uh, just got this little contraption here so that I can just break these loose. There. I'll leave one bolt in there so this doesn't fall. Be careful. More heavy than you think. And there is the rear main seal and my flywheel, which is in junk shape. Okay, so now I'm gonna be removing uh, these bolts here and there's two. All right, these are just 10 millimeter bolts. Gonna break them all. Use those little tabs there. There we go. Slow and steady wins the race here. You can see it's just falling right off. Okay, feel free to just pick those things up. I will say down here, you really don't want anything to go back into the engine. So do your best job to scrape and um, pull it out and down like that. I've already removed a lot. You can see they have old RTV or just some kind of gasket sealer in them. And you'll notice down here at the bottom of the crankshaft, you'll be scraping and think, you'll think that this is um, clean. Then if you were to run, uh, I'm, I'm being careful not to scour. If you were to run that in there, sorry. I really can't see what I'm doing. If you run that in there, you'll notice that there's more that will come out like that. And then just, you can just very carefully clean out these uh, areas where the bolts. Just a quick video to uh, demonstrate how I got out my rear main seal. I know there are rear main seal removers, but I just kind of propped it up off the ground. Um, I was using the punch to go around it several times and then finally, I got smart and realized, taking me a little bit of time here with my vice grips, basically, all right. So I would put on my vice grips and I had a much bigger bite that's just barely holding on, but you get the point. I was taking as large of a bite out of um, that edge as possible and then I would hold it and then just hammer the vice grips. These are. You know, if I break my vice grip, big deal. But I've been out here for 30 minutes before I finally went, you know what, let me just hit that. And um, that worked. All right, I've got it cleaned as well as I can. And just so you can see, cleaned really well on that side. Now to put the RTV on. luck I'm gonna take this is just loose just using it kind of as a template if you will and hoping that uh, as I put it on and then pull this back I know I'll have to wipe I'll be darned All right, now round two this in a second but when it's up there like this obviously I'll be fine I have already put on medium strength thread locker so you just finger tighten all of these and then you have to wait about an hour and torque it down I cannot replace the uh, rear main seal until that 
metal gasket or metal plate is fully torqued and tightened against the transmission bell housing. And that way, when I put my rear main seal on and it's flush with the metal, um, it would be pointless to do that now and then torque it and I'd have to redo it. So um, at this point, I'm going to try the monumental effort of cleaning this disgusting bell housing. I'm gonna take the throw up bearing and the clutch fork out. Just push on that and pull out at the same time. That's old. And then, this is on the pivot stud back there. Can we get it through this boot? So the pivot stud right there. Happy to see that's not destroyed. You can see the spring in there. All the nastiness it is. So, um, oh, good. Good to see this input shaft not move. If it was going to move, then it's a bad transmission. So, it's good. I'm going to stop the camera. I'm actually, getting my putty knife and just scraping this off. All right, I'm just going to take a high temperature, excuse me, grease and pressure. I'll, I'll wipe all that off. It's a little hard to get it up in there. This is so that when the new rear main seal goes on and the crankshaft spins up, it's not a dry fitting. Now, you remember how hard it was to get this old one out? Obviously, don't do it like that. It needs to go on like this. And we'll wipe that outside off. You can see the advantage of putting that grease on it. Sure does slide in there nice. And then just wiping off the outside right now. That feels good. Won't hurt to have any of this, but when it's, if it spins up fast, I don't want it getting on the flywheel. So just clean it up a little bit, making sure the crankshaft surface is good. Okay, time for the flywheel. And uh, these are very heavy, if you don't know. I put on a, a new pair of gloves. You really shouldn't be touching these with dirty gloves. You'll transfer all the oil and grease. I sprayed this surface down on the back side as well with uh, brake cleaner just to get all the that when it comes from the factory it has an anti-rust uh, surface on it or anti-rust application on it this small hole aligns with that small hole okay this is my spline alignment tool inside my flywheel there's already the uh, pilot bushing bearing but that'll go into there this is just going to help me i've got that much Okay, I've already got thread locker on these. Oh, go left. There you go. Okay, once you get two of them definitely in with your hands. Okay, save this, obviously, for just a second for the clutch. Okay, time for the clutch and uh, pressure plate. Try not to, even though my hands are clean, try not to touch the uh, actual surfaces of the clutch disc. You'll note right here, it says flywheel side, obviously into the flywheel. So I take my clutch alignment tool and I just stick it all the way in the uh, input shaft where that's gonna go. Okay, the uh, pressure plate, I have cleaned that surface off with brake cleaner. Now you'll notice I put a little Sharpie down here, a Sharpie on that dowel. I messed up putting it there, ignore that. You'll see three dowels here. These are weighted, so there's only one alignment for this. It's not like you can put it either here or here, or here, or here, or whatever. This one means it lines up with those two. Woo. Sorry. So slide it over, align it into there. Sorry, my head's in the way. Okay, so 
It's all there. I'm going to leave that tool in there. One right there, and then we can hold it. Just going slowly so that it evenly aligns till I feel it bottom out. You can see by torquing it, how the others become loose. So I'll do this twice. All right, well the belt housing is looking uh, much better than it did before. I was able to uh, take my plastic putty knife scraper and I just scraped everything I could before I, I put on brake cleaner. Um, it is easy to go through three cans of brake cleaner, man. The one thing you really need to clean is the input shaft and this collar that the throw out bearing but the uh, throw up bearing is going to go on and then the pivot stud right here. So this was the uh, old clutch fork. Of course, it goes in that rubber boot. The pivot stud um, rubs on, on that and the slave cylinder rubs in there. So I'll be putting some high temp grease in there and there um, on these wear points and then up against this on the uh this collar and then the splined input shaft and the end of this here the nose of that now i will tell you um if this comes out and you don't know how to do it how to reinstall it if you put it in backwards there's no way it even goes down so you shouldn't have to force it just set it in and then there you go very simple now this clutch fork does not have those metal leaf springs that come out right there some models will, and you have to properly install the throw-out bearing in between the clutch fork and that leaf spring. But this particular engine model, that's all it is. At this point, I'm just gonna take uh, my red and tacky. You can see there's just a, a, I'll say a liberal thin coating of grease everywhere. I put um, a little bit of high temp grease. And then of course, inside for the pivot stud, outside for the slave cylinder, and then on these wear points right here. Squish. Squish that through. And then that's it. Okay. Two of the, all right, I'll get this one. Oh, crapper, I didn't hit the ground. All right, I'm gonna be throwing these away, but I wanted to try to show some of the problems. <clears throat> My old pressure plate here, you can see the grooves created by that throw out bearing. Inside of the pressure plate, as you can see, is also quite warped. Um, some of these rivets, it's getting down quite low. And the other side, right, was um, also pretty pretty worn down. And then we have the flywheel, and the uh, grooving is pretty significant. The plastic washer is already on. The uh, metal washer is now on. Hopefully it works. If not, I've got a whole pack of new ones. Now we're going to get... The thermostat housing. The square hole right there is what that brown little electrical cable clip goes into. 
I've got the 10 millimeter bolt already in here, so I'm just holding it onto. That's in the hole there. Of course, the C clamp goes around the heater hose, and then this little clip here is what this electrical bracket thing clips into. I'm gonna start connecting these sensors and get them out of the way on the reverse light. Uh, there's only one way it can go. You'll feel them click. Click. Slide that on. There are two, um, this is slave cylinder hose here. I'm gonna move it. See the hole right there? Two 10, two 10 millimeter bolts. Careful not to drop these. Sorry. Whew. Very happy to hear that hit the ground. The bolt for the slave cylinder supply line has a washer on it. Make sure it's... I think now is as good a time as any to get the uh, slave cylinder here put in, the new one. Call my old one. It has the supply line on there. And the new one does not. So pay attention. Just to note that this supply line is a uh, 15 millimeter. It'll just spin and spin and spin. There's uh, this small, I don't know if it's a little brass pin or what, but I just have my punch. You're gonna need a punch. I'm gonna hammer that out and this just pulls out and then I'll be putting it uh, into the new one. So the washer, not terribly concerned with how I put it in, just that I clip it on. So there we go. Now it clicked in, still spins but it's where it needs to be and you can see through that hole there, perfect. Careful not to mushroom that. My punch is a better option. I want to point out I put some high tip grease on the end. So in order to put this in, I'm going to fish this through here. You have to be able to compress and then set it down in. So have your bolts handy. putting the brake line back in there and then we'll bleed it. All right, I got my 15 millimeter flare nut and then the 12 millimeter flare nut's gonna go over that jam nut there. Start threading it by hand. Um, for sure, get a few threads in there. And again, this is why the uh, bracket there is a little bit loose so that we have some free play. Once this is fully tight, then I'm going to fully tighten down that bolt and then put that vent cap, well, black, a uh, black vent cap on top of this and uh, we're all done except for the starter <clears throat> this is when you start having thoughts about wanting to kill whoever designed these cars we're going to be getting the master cylinder which is way back there when we get the master cylinder we're going to need to bleed the slave cylinder right down there and that's at the silver tip. I think I'm gonna remove this uh, motor mount. It's just three, probably 17 millimeter bolts if I had to guess. Oxygen sensor will just be sitting free. Remove this and then once this is removed, then I'll actually have um, room to continue to open and close the bleeder valve as I'm pushing on the clutch after the master cylinder is done. Without it, there's just hardly any clearance at all. So, so I'm gonna remove that and then get started on the master cylinder. Put your screwdriver right there, pop it right out. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, 
Well, that's surprising. Those were not very tight. Next thing I'm saving up for is an air ratchet. Oh my gosh. Time to do the master cylinder. I'm just gonna pop these wires out. When I pulled the reverse light, there was only one way they could go. Okay, it's the same. Okay, this is worth trying to uh, document here. I also removed right there a little cable harness that was just clipped in right there in those holes. That's a 12 millimeter jam nut, but I can't get, uh, it's like it needs to be tightened 16th of an inch more, loosened 16th of an inch in order for the flare nut wrench to actually fit on it. It's so limited here with the, the booster box, that big old black um, cylinder there. And the um, frame of the car here, there's just only, there's hardly any wiggle room for that wrench. And so uh, what I did, I figured it needed to come closer towards me. So what I did was basically get it up into that one and the one on the other side. And it's just those, um, it's just these little typical nuts. Now the carter pin pulled it straight down and it uh, came out and then... Uh, just gently had to hammer the cotter pin out and hammered on the threads of the master cylinder on both sides just to push it out of the way. Hopefully now I'll be able to get that flare nut wrench. It's just impossible to film. Just wanted you to know what's going on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is what happens when you drop a bolt. Oh my gosh. It's right here behind there. I was trying to put that bolt on and it fell back behind and landed back behind this. Now that that's done, oh my gosh. So that's what you're gonna need to do with your left hand, hold that 19 millimeter on the bottom and then with your right hand, I'm just gonna crank it. I've already done that, but I just wanted to demonstrate um, how that was done. Just uh, an FYI, I took the battery J-hooks on the end of a vice grip, and this works really, really well for sticking it down there and grabbing the threaded the threaded rod of the master cylinder. There's two that have to go in a hole. Another lesson learned. So I should have unscrewed this, and it would have made taking the old master cylinder off a lot easier. So sure enough, it was a whole lot easier to install with it off. So I remember today I dropped, I dropped that bolt. I just got a magnetic drive on and then I was able to. So like this one right there was easy cause it's a straight shot and I just started. You could see it, that one was the one that I dropped before and I was able to uh, use this tool, put it on there, get it started. After I tighten it up then I'm going to add this piece to it and work on getting the cotter pin back through and then I can adjust it and then I will go on the um, other side again and attach that brake line that's going to be a doozer but um, we're going to get it done there's the cotter pin installed the cotter pin only goes in one way right there so you can see the jam nut tightened up against there you'll just have to experiment with your the amount of play in your clutch so I opted for that much play. Okay, and you adjust that by moving moving that jam nut uh, closer or further away. Take a screenshot of this. $1.99, it's like $1.06 online, but there's the, uh, the number. And all it is, is a little rubber washer. So it has to fit exactly onto that piece, but luckily I don't have to undo the brake line. I'm gonna very carefully fish that washer onto that tip and then put it back into um, 
the master cylinder and then take my needle nose pliers and shove this pin back in there and then start bleeding it again and hope to high heaven that it doesn't leak. I will note, if you look at an exploded parts diagram, it says get two, one for the master cylinder and one for the slave cylinder. However, when you buy the slave cylinder, it comes with one. When you buy the master cylinder, nowhere. I, I checked Honda, Napa, O'Reilly, Advance, um, you name it. None of them had a, slave, a master cylinder that came with this. So I had to, uh, at least at Advance, they recognized what it was, but you couldn't get it in the store. You had to get it from the dealer. Well, I am ashamed to say it is the next day. I cannot believe what trouble this has been. I had to actually order another X-ring from Honda, but this time I made an X-ring necklace. Uh, I'm gonna slide it through my hand. I dropped this twice. It happened to fall right where I could see it. So I can't physically, see, I can get one finger on there, but I can't pinch my fingers. The brake booster box here just prevents, and you can't balance that tiny little X-ring washer on the tip of your finger without it falling and then push it up onto the tip of this. It just will, it'll fall off. The other boneheaded thing, I'm kind of ashamed that I did this, but my tie rod, I made a terrible decision rather and hammered the uh, end of this threaded screw. And because it has a uh, cotter pin that goes through, you could see it's a little bit concave there on the tip. And I don't, I don't think that makes it weaker because all I hit it with was a ball ping hammer, but I certainly mushroomed the tip of the threads. I even took my tap and die set and, but the problem was I mushroomed the tip and so there was no threads for it to start in. So I had, I was just going over and over and over and over trying to make it. Well, long story short, I called advance and I thought this would be really expensive, but with a $10 coupon that I happened to have, it was only 10 bucks. So in the automotive world, a $10 mistake is a miracle. So I'm gonna apply a tiny bit, just a dab of um, brake fluid on the end of this washer, X-ring washer here gasket, so that when I, I'm gonna insert it and then just cut the fishing line and pull it through and that way it just slides through and doesn't end up pulling the washer off again. Okay, that was a success. And now I need to put it back into that hole. Can't believe that actually worked. So I cut the fishing line. Once the fishing line was cut, I was able to uh, very carefully push that brake line back in. And then I took that cotter pin on the end of my magnet here to where it was aligned. Uh, I can't believe this worked the first time, but pushed it, pushed it down through holding the cotter pin and was able to just kind of push it into the hole where just tip right here was going through. And then I took um, dryer tape on the end of the screwdriver here and was able to kind of pry this in through while I was applying pressure to the brake line, just kind of up and down, up and down, wiggling that little bit to where the tip could go through. All right, well, I'm happy to say that we are done with that with that piece. I had uh, this hose on the bleeder screw. I've got the cap on the bleeder screw right now, right there, but I had this on, and the first night I was doing this, I was by myself. It takes forever. You have to, um, if, when you turn it to the right, it opens up, then you go and push your clutch down, which will force all the brake fluid into the pan there, then you turn it to the left and close the bleeder screw. Then you go and lift the clutch back up. Then you turn it to the right and push it down. Turn it to the left, pull it back up and just repeat, repeat, repeat. But this time, you know, my son was, was here and I just said, hey, all I was saying, I would say down, up, down, up, you know, whatever. I was just making him and it, he did it probably <sighs> 10 times. And I will note that I also filled up the reservoir about three times, be very careful. I mean, if you have air in there, you're just going to have to keep redoing this. You won't break anything. You're just going to have to keep re-bleeding the uh, brake line. And then once it comes out clear, because this is the new fluid is clear, it was brown. But once it comes out clear, okay, then um, close it, tighten it all the way. And then when you pull the clutch up, 
it should stay up and you should be able to push just like a normal clutch operation because the line's pressurized, the bleeder screw is closed, and it's all good. So now I've added brake fluid in there. Okay, when you're all done, you should have the rubber diaphragm inside. You should have the uh, this electrical connection put back together. Your cable harness is attached and uh, everything down there with the master cylinder is all done. On this mount here that's going in those three holes and there is a longer washered one that goes in this uh, bottom hole right there. I have three quarts of Honda manual transmission fluid. Has to be Honda so go to your dealership and get it and I'm going to be using a siphon pump. So I've got my uh, drain pan underneath. Once you remove this uh, bolt, make sure you understand it's got the lock washer on it. And I'm just going to very carefully put it into my quart. Okay, um, I used exactly two quarts. I'm just going to tighten it like this. I should mention I shot some brake cleaner in there so you don't have fluid everywhere. All right, I should note that these are uh, 17 millimeters. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then these really long ones, seven and eight. I'm gonna get my anti-seize on all those bolts. I have my impact drill ready to go after I hand thread them just to get it enough to hold two of them so that this uh, strut piece isn't just falling and then I'll um, hand torque it in there.